the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. I have a wonderful guest for you today from the greater Seattle area with Design Realty, the founder and CEO, Kevin Sarboras. Kevin, how are you? I'm good, Tim. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries. Thank you so much for being on the program today. Happy Friday. Uh, hope hope the weather is good there. I heard uh, maybe you're around 35 to 38 degrees. Is that correct? Yeah, but they're blue skies, so blue skies, it's uh, nice out right now. Take it. I'll take it. Fantastic. So I got to ask you, Kevin, I ask everybody this. Uh, so don't feel bad when I say it. Were you uh, like a five-year-old little boy tugging on your parents, you know, uh, pants going, hey, I want to be a realtor when I grow up? Or, or did you, like most of us, kind of fall into it? Yeah, no, I was a bartender. I was running. I was a cook, right? You know, nice. 2014, I was tending bar and flipping burgers. So it, it, it was a, you know, a, a stumble into later in life career. Right. So how'd that happen? I mean, you know, I, there's always a story, right? And that's the story we want to hear where you just like, hey, I'm fed up with this. I got to go find something. Or did, did you have a mentor that you uh, worked with? Or how did that work? Well, I met a beautiful woman and uh, she Bravo, thought that would be a good friend. idea to, yeah. to give it a shot, right? So I was running restaurants. I was working. I loved it. I was a butcher. I was a chef, um, you know, transitioned to front of house and general management of it. And it, you, you kind of cap out pretty, pretty quick in, in the restaurant world and you're burning a midnight candle on both ends, right? So I met a girl and she uh, had experience in real estate selling investment properties out of state. And she just, you know, told me that she thought I'd do a really good job at it. We moved in real quick and she helped me get through school. You know, I took the 90 hours in, in a few weeks and jumped right in and, and we just, got the ball rolling on treating it like a business and really analyzing everything that we did uh, every step of the way. Man, isn't that crazy? They've written many a song and poem about what a, how, how a woman can affect a man and make changes. And that's the kind of changes we need right there, right? Yeah, right. Love it. Love it. So tell me about your team today. I do know you do have a team. I did a little due diligence, you know, just from your website. Uh, tell me about your team and how you got all that started. I'm sure you start. Did you start? on a team or did you start as a solopreneur or how did that work? Sure. Uh, so 2015, November, I got licensed and um, signed up with uh, EXP of all places. Right. And I think I did two deals with them before I found a, a, a little boutique local place in, in Bellevue. And I started working as a solo agent, mainly my wife and I kind of just treated it like a business from the get go. And I'd go out on a showing and come home and, and we just sit there and break it down. What, what did I do? What did I do? Right. What did I do wrong? How could I change um, going forward? And we beat feet, networking groups, all that kind of stuff to the tune of 12 deals the first year. So not too shabby first year and then we got pregnant right so baby on the way got to find some sustainable income so we we figured how can we get it to be sustainable and so we started buying leads started figuring out how to work those leads ran through god knows how many crms and you know whiteboards and pages on how to do this how to do that um and we started getting pretty decent at it until the point where I, I got too busy to handle it myself. So we kind of just stumbled into growing a team. I was going to just hire a couple of assistants and, and try to crank uh, and turn out deals and, and make some money. But turned out I was pretty good at teaching those assistants, right? And then we had the light bulb moment where, gosh, if I can teach other people how to do this, then I don't have to do it anymore. Right. And so that's really where we started the team. And uh, at the end of 2018, we had two or three agents uh, I was still in production by the time 2020 rolled around. I was out of production. We had about, you know, seven or eight agents um, and we were doing a pretty good clip close to 100 million uh, off of seven, seven or eight agents. We got a second office. We grew our presence in, uh, you know, the east side area, King County, more population down there um, and out of our little Snohomish rural office. Uh, and grew the brokerage last year from eight agents to 27 now with a few full-time employees. And part of that has come from really reinvesting. I think uh, when we would have big, 
big months to take that money and don't go buy a car. We reinvest it into our systems and our process and, and buy more leads. We partnered with Zillow. Actually, we got a, we're a flex team with uh, Zillow right now. So nice. we get a lot of deals that way. And it's a very attractive way for us to recruit um, other agents into the team. Man, that's fantastic. That's a great story. Yeah, that's a, that's a good growth story for sure. So let me ask you, what uh, what is the next, let's put our prognostication hats on real quick, right? And what does the next one, three, and five years look like for you? So I've got two offices now, uh, and year 2023 is going to be dedicated to filling those offices out, right? Uh, I want to increase the agent count so that we can have, uh, you know, a good amount of people working out of our offices. We're refining our process this year for training and conversion. And, and really, we put like 600 pages of material together last year. And we're going to keep doing that this year to, to train our brokers on product process and contracts. And because we think if you're not prepared, if you don't know what you're doing, and all you're doing is focusing on marketing, you're not going to be able to convert the people you get in front of. Right. So we focus really heavily on educating the broker up, up front, and we're refining that program it's an online program right now different modules that they nice. go through and really making it so that they're prepared to talk about both the, the house that they're in and uh, the process if they get hit with process questions very nice so let's let's stay on that for a minute kevin uh how do you go about finding team members and how do you vet them i mean is that a challenge for you or do they just jump on the boat like you know so far, they've kind of just jumped on the boat. You know, I haven't put a lot of work and effort into recruiting just because I'm a little nervous to, to bring too many people in and not be able to um, support them effectively. But over the last couple of years, we've built out our systems pretty to be pretty robust. We've got a real powerful CRM. We use HubSpot. We've developed it internally. That manages everything from start to finish. We've got a real strong relationship with Zillow. Uh, we have a high conversion rate with them. And so in Flex, if you have a high conversion rate, they just keep feeding you more. So we've got a good tap for leads there. And then outside of the, you know, production team stuff, we offer a lot of services. I bought a lot of furniture. We stage our brokers, uh, clients' homes at no cost to them or their client. Wow. Um, we'll split listing prep services with them. Um, and I've got a killer self-generated split too. So as a team, I'm not taking 50% of your self-generated business. I'm taking 20% up to $5,000. And if it's my cuts more than five grand, I cap it at five grand. So we got attractive options for brokers on, on, on all sides um, uh, of the coin, either come in with the leads and then go to transition out. Or if you're selling 30 homes on your own, it's a pretty good deal too. But we've pretty much just kind of organically done it and off of referrals, brokers bring in other people. We really um, interview them, you know, more so than try to recruit them. I want to make sure that people are going to sell homes. So it's kind of about mentality. I look for people who have been a little bit overlooked or dealt with some adversity because converting leads is a grind. It's not about going out and, and shaking hands and kissing babies as much as it is putting up with the rejection and disappointment of people saying no. Right. Right. So we really look for, you know, kind of those qualities in people and, and we can take somebody who's struggled for a year or two uh, and, and really turn them around and have success with them. Right. So let's talk about those struggles for a minute, um, you know, and not in any negative light at, at all, but, but let, let's just put it like this. If, if I had that magic wand, you know, uh, and, and I could solve any struggles that your team may have on a day-to-day -day basis. What would you say that number one thing is? It doesn't necessarily have to be a problem. Sometimes it's time. Sometimes it's manpower. Sometimes it's leads. What would your team, what would your biggest struggles be? I think the biggest struggle that most people have coming into this industry is going from having a job to not having a job and being your own boss, you know, and you don't have somebody managing your time for you anymore. I think a lot of you know, my guys, you know, we do a pretty good job, but especially newer ones, what do you do with your time? You know, when you're right. not, you're not out showing houses and writing contracts, you know, 10 hours a day until you're really, really, really into it. So what are you doing with your time? Because if you're just spending an hour a day on stuff and then dicking around on the computer, right. you're really not being effective. So finding out how to time block and, and, you know, go out and, break things up and go focus on education in your downtime too is something that's really important. And then on the flip side, 
somebody who's really cranking, it's like, you know, well, you got to find time for yourself, man. You can't work 80 hour weeks for, you know, 60, you know, 60 weeks in a row, you're going to burn, burn out and not going to be able to do it anymore. Um, so I think time management is a really, really important um, thing to focus on. Yeah, for sure. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to make an assumption. I don't like assuming, but you know, I know you're real heavy on the, on the training part, right? I mean, in, in working people through all that, is that part of the big picture in your training is, is showing them how to do that? Or do you let them kind of baptism by fire? Like most probably yourself, you know, came up and it was like, I got to learn all this the hard way, but do you find that? Or do you have like a module or, or. So we try to set them up. Um, it, you know, when they first sign up with us, we, we built out uh, a internal training system in HubSpot uh, using its deal pipeline stuff and tasks and all that kind of stuff. Right. So, Right off the bat, we're training them how to use our CRM while training them and built out in that CRM. It's probably 80 to 100 hours worth of work, to be honest with you. Sure. Um, uh, and so they're also having to learn how to space their time out, right? Um, in, the, in our training process, we've got modules on exterior construction materials, interior construction materials, our listing process, how to take a lead and convert it downstream. What are the things you say? We've developed the mnemonic kind of uh, process for first appointments for taking the leads so you can memorize it and jump to it quickly. And so as they're on the computer going through these different modules, you know, I'm telling them you should be spending three to four hours a day here. And then we send them out into the field too. I want them to go look at 100, 150 homes look at them in the same way, top to bottom, roof, you know, what's it made of, what's the siding, what's the interior look like. And so we're sending them out in the field too. And if they go to six to eight homes a day, I mean, that's going to take them two to three hours a day too. So what we're trying to do is set it up. So it's like in the real life, you're going to be on the computer for a portion of your day, and you're going to be out in the field for a portion of your day. And so I want you to do that now. And I want you to do this in, you know, two to three weeks so that you can actually get a feel for what's uh coming right and then once they're completing their training then it's a big focus on continuing education what are you going to do to continue to educate yourself and stay busy now because your pipeline's not just going to go from zero to you know packed overnight right. it's going to take time to build up right so are you also teaching them methodologies or is it incorporated just into the company because i know you're the zillow partner and things like that on i mean i just i think back there's so many boots on the ground things you you can do uh, you know, to lead generate, whether, as you said before, joining organizations and networking, obviously, things like that. Or is it all pretty much digital now? I mean, how, how are you all uh, bringing leads in besides the Zillow part of it? What's really interesting to me is like so many people still find uh, a real estate broker through referral means or means outside of the internet. I mean, like last, the last statistic I saw from a few years ago before, before COVID. So maybe it switched a little bit, but it was only like 10% of, of people meet their real estate agent from an online source, right. which means that's a huge market to, to shift. And it may have increased with COVID, but right. I haven't seen any stats on it recently. So rather than bombarding your, your everybody with, hi, I'm a real estate broker now, right. you know, work with me, please. I have no experience. Uh, we want, we, we teach them how to recognize opportunities to, to yeah. grab like your list. You got to listen, you got to have active listening ears on. And somebody says something about a refinance or a move or something like that. That's an opportunity for you to start inserting yourself, educating, talking about the same things they're talking about. So I really like people to be up on economic news, who's right. where the business is around. You have to kind of know, that's what I want them focusing on is learning how to have something to say in any conversation because then when those opportunities present themselves you're not a deer in the headlights yeah right, talk, right. you know i mean when like when boeing moved, if you didn't know boeing was moving right then then you were left in the dust so if you can right. stay up on that stuff then it's a little bit softer than blasting out to everybody hi i'm a real estate broker with no experience please sell your house with me aunt aunt margie yeah, that's that's great. I think that that's good, solid advice. I mean, even other in, ancillary things that happen in life, death, divorce, you know, on down the line. When you have those conversations, you do. You're right. You're 100 percent right, Kevin. You got to almost pick up on those keywords, right, that that are going to trigger that conversation 
Uh, and so not everybody can do that, right? It's not, yeah. not everybody can do that, but they could definitely be trained at least led down that path. So let's talk about your favorite topic or no, Ma, I take that back. You're uh, married and have a child. So your third or fourth <laughs> favorite topic, let's talk about Seattle. Let's talk about where you're at, you know, and the, the market that you work in. Talk a little bit about the, the different uh, communities there that you, you primarily focus on. Yeah, sure. So um, the Northwest Puget Sound region is really, uh, it's really interesting. You know, um, it, we're, we got a lot of lakes, a lot of rivers, a lot of water, a lot of mountains. So everywhere is kind of broken up. We, we don't talk about things in distance, like, you know, um, 10 miles away from this place. It's how many minutes are you away? Because yeah. it could take you 45 minutes to get from Seattle to Seattle because of all the bridges and everywhere you got to go. Right. So we, um, we service, you know, pretty much anywhere in the Puget Sound region, but our main markets are south, are the east side, I should say, Seattle proper, so Bellevue, Kirkland, Seattle, Bothell, um, that whole kind of area right around Lake Washington, and then we go down south into uh, South King County and all the way up into Snohomish County too. We've got an office in Snohomish County, and so we serve a lot of those um, areas up there as well, and it's a really fun place to be. It's a fun mix of uh, different areas. You got, you know, um, places in Bellevue that have $15 million, $30 million homes. And then we're selling, uh, you know, uh, $250,000, you know, shacks in, in North Snohomish County. And, and, and it's a, it's a good mix. Yeah, that is a nice, I'm in, I'm in almost the total opposite, polar opposite of you. I'm in West Palm beach, Florida. And, uh, yeah, and it, it's a similar situation. It's depending on which bridge you cross, I joke, I jokingly say it, not everybody finds it very funny, but I always say there, there is literally an other side of the tracks, you know, I mean, it just, it's the other side of the bridge or the other side of the tracks, however you look at it, but yeah, I mean, it could go all over the place. So that's a nice mix though. That's a good, especially if you're recruiting, right? I mean, I, I find it hard to, to, to I, would, I would think, find it hard to take an agent, a new agent in the business and say, okay, go find a $20 million home to close on. Sounds great, right? Yeah, it just doesn't happen like that. It could, it could, but uh, you know, it, it's nice to have other areas and, and I guess ranges of homes that you can get in there and get in the right organizations and get the right, uh, like right home listings. Um, so I did want to ask you one question. This is a personal question, and it and I don't if you don't want to answer it or you that's just not a something you want to discuss. Is, is your wife in the business as well? Yes. Okay. Well, I couldn't have done it without her. Okay, uh, this, fantastic. I mean, so, I'm glad I asked. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people will say that their wives are a part of the business, right? Yeah. But uh, in, in, no, in, in every sense, this she's more business savvy than I am, right? So yeah. she was she's owned her own business since she was 16 years old. Wow. She's been an entrepreneur. I don't know that she's ever worked for anybody but herself, um, and she's been successful at it. So when I met her in 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 our late 20s, um, she was, you know miles ahead of me career wise. Right. Um, and That's so awesome. that was really helpful having somebody who knew what they were doing uh, to help kind of coach me along in that essence. And then being uh, partners is, you know, we are partners everywhere. So there are some struggles there, obviously, sure. but, but I mean, being able to, to do this with uh, her and, and not have to bring in outside help, she has a, a, a mind for the business um, she's able to keep things on track. She runs a lot of the, um, the actual business part of it. She's unlicensed. Uh, and then I handle all of the, everything licensed, right? All the managing broker duties. Uh, you know, what are the contract questions? How are we doing this? Um, is she, this thing that's happening right now, she's got a great sales background. Um, she's built out our CRM for us. So she's no, nice. she's a very, very big part of the business and it's, uh, successful because of her. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. That's great to hear. I think I could I could do a whole nother probably a whole nother show on working with a spouse. Yeah, I, I, oh. I, think it, I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, how would someone get in touch with you, Kevin? Either you or someone in your office. You know, what are your contact points? Sure. So, um, you know, we have a website, uh, designwarealty.com. Uh, you can always get us there. I'm Kevin at designwarealty.com. Uh, my phone number is 206-351-2174. You can call me, text me. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, message me. I, I, you know, that's it's all good. All of it comes to me and I'm responsive. All right, fantastic. So 
I always say, Kevin, you're you're the you're the hit of the day, right? And uh, I'm just a DJ spinning the hits. So take us out this last minute or two. Uh, you know, whatever's on your heart, your mind, your soul that you want to share with the universe. Uh, give us the good word on the way out. Okay, well, thanks, Tim. It's been a lot of fun being here. Um, I appreciate you the invite that you extended to me. Um, and I think that you know the the thing that I'm most passionate about is educating the broker so that they can take care of the client. And I don't think there's enough uh, people who do that. You know, big brokerages tend to be overwhelmed with with licenses and can't really educate as as much as you know they should. And we need right. strong education in this uh, you know field because you're dealing with big numbers and and people's lives. And so we feel really really passionately about. Um, taking care of our brokers, educating them so that they can take care of their clients. Good stuff, man. Good sage advice, Kevin. Thank you so much for being on the program today. I look forward to catching up with you over the next three, six, nine months. See how things are going. Maybe we'll have your uh, your, your wonderful spouse on the show one day. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Have a great weekend too. You, you too.